This is the third session on Abraham. Learning from his life journey of faith. Let's once again read the theme verse of this series from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, or better yet, know Him, and He will make your paths straight. Today, I want to cover a difficult topic over quite a few chapters on the covenant of God with Abraham. <clears throat> At the beginning, right after Abraham entered the promised land, God gave him promises. And we can read that again in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, God said, I will make you into a great nation. So that's a promise. And then, of course, uh, we'll be blessing him. Then, if you go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring, I'll give this land. So those are the two promises right upon Abraham entering the promised land. It's very interesting that after Abraham did two giant decisions, For one, he let Lot choose the land. Or better yet, he let God choose for him. And secondly, after defeating the four kings of the north, he refused the spoils of the battle. In fact, he refused the kingship that King Sodom was offering him. And afterwards, God appeared to Abraham and said, I'm going to make a covenant, a binding treaty with Abraham. Chapter 15. This is after God comfort Abraham in verse 1. It says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Then in verse 5, The Lord came to Abraham again, and he took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to them, So shall your offspring be. Jump to verse 15. Another promise of the covenant. You, however, 
referring to Abraham, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried in a good old age. Verse 18. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. And one more. Chapter 17. Verses 4, 5, 6. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. Now, I want to be very careful because on the surface, it seemed to indicate the first God promised certain blessings to Abraham that will make you into a great nation. And then also to your offspring, I'll give you this land. And then it seems that after Abraham let God choose the land for him, and also after defeating the four kings of the north, and yet he gave up all the spoils and refused the kingship. I only want God himself. It seems that the blessings, the covenant blessings of God explode from one great nation to father of nations. from your offsprings to offerings so numerous you cannot count like the stars in the sky. And then from I'll give you this land to the land from river of Egypt to Euphrates River beyond what eyes can see. I do not think that we should say something like oh the more you love God the more you obey God, then God will expand and shower more blessing to you. I don't think that's what the heart of God. In fact, when we first receive by faith the salvation work accomplished by Jesus on the cross, we step into the sonship in the family of God. We step into all the inheritance and the spiritual blessings in Christ. All of us. And like Abraham, as he walked with, with God over the years and know him better and better, he realized 
that the blessing of God a bigger, a richer, far more beyond what he thought. It's not because the blessings multiplied because Abraham did something, but rather as he came to know God more, he get a more fuller picture of the richness of God's covenant blessings. However, I do want to say that sometimes for some of us, we feel like that why God is withholding more blessings from us. I think there is a spiritual reason for it. Spiritually, for some of us, we are not ready yet to receive more blessings that God has in store for each one of us. We are not mature enough yet. In fact, I would say we are not ready to handle more blessings. But for some of us, when we get more blessed, we get more greedy and we want more. And for some of us, when we get too blessed, we start indulging in our blessings. <laughs> and before we know it, we start neglecting God himself. And for some of us, when we get too blessed, too successful, we become proud. And we kind of pat our shoulders. Hmm. I think from now on, I can handle this. I don't need God anymore. These are spiritual traps, potential traps that we could fall into if our lives become too smooth and too blessed. And the ones who can overcome these traps are the ones like Abraham. They have come to a point, like Abraham, willing to yield the control of their life to God, 100%. And who do not love the world anymore? In chapter 16 of Genesis, we have this story of Hagar and Ishmael. Ishmael was born by Hagar, the maid servant of Sarah. It is not part of the promise or the plan of God. But Sarah, at her old age, knowing that God has closed her womb, kind of miss or reinterpret the promise of God that says, a son 
will come from your own body. Referring to Abraham. So she thought, maybe it will be through my maid servant, Hagar. So she convinced Abraham and gave Hagar to Abraham. And Ishmael was born. But that was not the son of the promise. It is unfortunate that Sarah gave up all hope. I want to encourage our brothers and sisters. When we come to a place where we think That is impossible anymore. Have hope in Him. Our God can do the impossible. I will also quickly talk about chapter 18. This is the story after God revealed to Abraham that he is going to check on Sodom and Gomorrah and see how wicked the cities have become. Abraham started pleading with God on the basis that he trusts that his God would do right even when he was judging. That he would not destroy the good people with the wicked people. So he started with if there are 50 Person. Who are right before God. Then will you still destroy the cities? God said, no. If they're 50, I'll let it pass. And then he started going down. Until he hit. Because in his calculation, Lot's household of 10 persons. And God said, if he found 10, he will not destroy the cities. You know, it's amazing. Abraham saved Lot and his family twice. Even though Lot had took the best land under him. Abraham didn't care. He did not love the world the way Lot did. Abraham remembered Lot. When the four kings taken captive Lot's family, he went and saved them. And this time, when God was prepared to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham pleaded for Lot's family. Now I want to 
if you can read it, it's a little bit light. I want to look at the covenant God made with Abraham. And the covenant, the salvation covenant, God made with each one of us. Okay, let's read. Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. I will establish my covenant, is God saying, as an everlasting covenant. Okay, everlasting. And then you, you go to verse 13. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Verse 19. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you'll call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant. So this is an unchanging, everlasting covenant or promise. Same thing for us. It's eternal, unchangeable. It is also the covenant with Abraham. It's unconditional. For two reasons. One is when you look at in chapter 15, we won't go into details. According to the customs at that time, if there is going to be an agreement, a covenant agreement, then they will pass through cut half animals. And in this case, only God passed through, committing himself to keeping the promise. Abraham did not. So all the promises are by God. Abraham did not need to. And secondly, in chapter 17, it seemed to God require a sign of the covenant, the circumcision. That on the eighth day, every male of the household had to be circumcised. It is a sign that the person is in the covenant. That's the only requirement. It is, how should I say, it is an acceptance of this relationship with God. As it says here in the quote, the relationship is, God said, I am your God and you are my people. That relationship. If someone not willing to be part of that relationship, then he doesn't need to be circumcised. And he will not be a part of that relationship or under that covenant blessings. For our salvation covenant, same thing. It's unconditional. The only part, again, the same thing, our acceptance of this precious gift. And our acceptance is instead of circumcision, 
is repentance of our heart. Turn away from the past and now turn to God and Him alone. And we also enter the relationship that God says, I'm your God and you're my people. But in addition, one more relationship. Not only God, but also He's our Heavenly Father. We are His children. Lastly, I just want to mention that in the Abraham covenant, if you go back to chapter 15, verse 6, the Bible said, Abram believed the law and he, God, credited it to him as righteousness. Abraham believed all these blessings of God. And he got credit, righteousness, the right standing with God. The same thing. We believe in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ and receive him into our heart. Then we also credit with righteousness, the right standing with God. At this point, I want to say something from my heart. For many of us, we have known this salvation. For many years. And for some of us, we probably are Christians for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We sometimes forgot that although it is a, how should I say, a gift. We are saved by grace. We don't have to do anything to work for this forgiveness of sin, of this salvation work. But I want to remind each one of us From the very beginning, it was God who reached out to us. When we were still living in sins, He desired this relationship with us. He wants to be our God and more so he wants to be our Heavenly Father we may have known this story so well that I think we have lost sight of how precious this gift is.
for our sins to be forgiven, someone paid a dear price. The Son of God. He gave his life for me, for you, on the cross. So that we can, by accepting this free gift, return back to the family of God. For some of us, we take it too lightly. We are still not willing to let go of this world. Remember Lot's wife? Even though Lot, the wife, and the two daughters, they had to flee from the city. Her heart was too attached to Sodom. And he, she couldn't help to look back. How many of us are still lingering, are still looking back, are still not able to fully let go? God wants to bless all of us, each one of us. The multiple abundant blessings of God. Let me finish by reading again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways know Him and He will make your paths straight.